Today I'm going to talk a little bit about playing diatonic seventh chords through the major scale. When we first learn to do this and we're young, we usually just learn this one melody. Basically root position 1, 3, 5, 7 and sometimes root position 7, 5, 3, 1. It would sound like this in concert C or D major for tenor. I would think D major 7, E minor 7, F sharp minor 7, G major 7, A7, B minor 7, C sharp half diminished 7, back to D major 7. But uh, as we get older, we tend to stop practicing these diatonic 7th chords, or we just build that pattern or a few simple patterns like that into muscle memory and play them quickly through the keys, the 12 keys, sometimes not even that. But what I'd like to point out is that we tend to overlook the fact that each of those four note structures or 7th chords have potentially 96 melodies that we could be drawing upon to create uh, our 7th chord melody. And usually when I say this in class, people are like, how is that possible? There's only four inversions and four notes. And, you know, uh, but the point is, is that although it's four inversions of four notes at piano, that would just be four sounds in closed position. Uh, when we arpeggiate, we have 24 melodies for each of the inversions. So for instance, in a root position, I could play six melodies that start on the root in root position, right? This would be one. Here would be another. In other words, two melodies that go from the root to the third. We also have two melodies that go from the root to the fifth. And two melodies that go from the root to the seventh. And that's six melodies. The six melodies in root position that start on the root. A melody could start on the third and still be in root position because the lowest note will still be the root. So if we start on the root, uh, on the third and go to the root, we have two melodies. Or we could go from the root to the fifth, uh, sorry, the third to the fifth, and we'd have two more melodies. We could go from the root to the seventh for two more melodies. Sorry, third to the seventh. So that's six more melodies. If we start on the fifth, we have six more melodies. So I'll just play through those. six more melodies if we start on the seventh in root position. So that's all 24 melodies. I'm sorry, I made one little mistake in there, but you get the point. 24 melodies in root position. If we change the structure to first inversion where the third is the lowest in the bass, we get 24 more melodies. And so 96 melodies, most of which we have never played, most of us. Um, and so we have all this opportunity to take a simple concept, a structural concept, and gain a lot of leverage on understanding diatonic harmony, seventh chord manipulation, seventh chord melodies. It's good for ear training and for your intellect for understanding these chords and creating melodies that are really compelling from the seventh chord. Sometimes we think, oh, we can't just play one, three, five, seven, but usually it's because we're not playing it in an interesting way. So when I have my students do this, I have them always think of the chord first so that they don't create divergent neural pathways. They'll try to play it by ear immediately and they will make a ton of mistakes and they'll f eventually forget what they were even trying to play. So just think of the chord first, and that will not happen. You'll most likely play it perfect the first time as long as you go slowly enough. So for instance, if I'm in second inversion, and I order the notes from 
let's say starting on the fifth you don't have to in second version but if I go five three seven one on concert C major my D major that would sound like and that would be a second inversion melody five three seven one using the diatonic a diatonic seventh chord and then I would just think of the next chord in the scale so I think D made D major seven E minor seven F sharp minor seven G major seven A seven B minor seven C sharp half diminished and then back to D major seven so if you think of the chord first the seventh chord first it'll strengthen your understanding of all 12 keys it really help and it will also mean that you play the idea that you're trying to hear and audiate in your mind perfectly every time so you won't create divergent neural pathways that are incorrect in other words you're hearing something and your fingers go to the wrong notes which if you don't have perfect pitch is extremely important you have to learn to play exactly what you're audiating in your mind play what you hear um, so that exercise has been really valuable for myself and for my students and you can every day you can just pick a key so let's say we say I pick a major B major for me on tenor a hard key and I pick an inversion so I'll say first inversion and then I pick an order of notes randomly five three seven one so if I'm in first inversion five three seven one and it'll sound like this <laughs> Five, three, seven, one. So then I say B major, C sharp minor, D sharp minor, E major, F sharp seven, G sharp minor, A sharp half diminished, back to B major seven so I played a difficult melodic idea with no mistakes granted it was slow but I thought intellectually before of each of the chords in the B major scale for me concert A um, and played an idea that I may have never played in that key or ever I'm not sure but the process I have done tons I love doing this process if you want to develop the muscle memory then you would just repeat that thinking of the chord beforehand every time until you start to intuitively know that what you're audiating in your mind your fingers are going to and uh, you'll know you'll just know like I know it I, I'm hearing it in my mind I'm audiating it in my mind and my hands are going to those notes then you're playing it by ear you can abandon the thought and you just have a new melody a new melody that goes through the diatonic seventh chords in a given key so I hope you find that interesting I'll put uh, a blog post up on matauto.org that has a PDF the PDF I'll put up has the 96 different melodies from a C major 7 chord just so you can see all 96 you could print it out and circle your favorite ones and then you could take that shape and put it through any scale whether it be major harmonic minor melodic minor harmonic major so much you can do with this alright hope you find this helpful and I'll see you on the next one thanks for listening